So I guess Microsoft disabled automatic registry backups in Windows 10 and 11. And you know, that caused me a lot of issues last week. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn them back on so that you don't run into the same problems that I had. Stay tuned. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. I had a system in my shop last week that due to unavoidable circumstances, lost power while running System Restore. Once I got it back to my shop, it wouldn't boot. It was going through startup repair loops. I know that when the system lost power, it was in the process of restoring the registry. So, no problem. I'll just use the command prompt from the recovery and go into the registry folder and copy the last registry backup and the system should be fine. Unfortunately, to my surprise, the registry backup folder was empty. So after doing a little bit of research, it turns out that Microsoft disabled automatic registry backups all the way back in 2018 with the 1803 build of Windows 10. They claimed it was to save hard drive space, and because of System Restore, the automatic registry backup was no longer necessary. So then in recovery, I decided to try System Restore then. Unfortunately, for some reason, System Restore stated that there were no restore points available. And after spending an hour or so trying to find a solution to my problem, I ended up having to reload the system with a fresh copy of Windows 10. It was simply unfixable, thanks to Microsoft. But you know what? Maybe the system was damaged beyond what simply reverting to a backup copy of the registry would have fixed in the first place. However, I wasn't even able to attempt that because Microsoft took it upon themselves to disable a feature that Windows has had for decades. Furthermore, if Microsoft expects us to use System Restore in place of the automatic registry backups, then why do they disable System Restore on fresh installs of the newest builds of Windows? It turns out that Microsoft actually wants us to use the Reset My PC feature instead of System Restore or automatic backups. If you don't know this, the Reset My PC feature is essentially just reloading Windows. It gives you the option to save your data, but not your programs. As a technician, we have something in the industry called nuke and pave techs. These are technicians that are typically brand new to the industry and don't know a lot of the tricks on how to fix a broken copy of Windows. So their first go-to is to simply reload Windows. You see them a lot in the big box stores. Now, it turns out Microsoft is the equivalent of a nuke and pave tech because they now want us to just reload Windows instead of fixing it whenever there's a problem. If you can't tell, I'm mildly ticked off at Microsoft right now, but at least I got a good video idea out of it, right? So today I'm gonna to show you not only how to make sure System Restore is enabled on your system, but I'm also going to show you how to turn back on the automatic registry backups. Believe it or not, all of the guides on the internet, at least the ones I saw, that tell you how to do this leave out an extremely important step that if you don't do, your registry backup will be a bunch of files that are zero kilobytes. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video because while researching this topic, I found another really cool tweak related to this that you're not going to want to miss. So, let's get to it. Okay, so now we're in Windows 10 right now. All of these steps should also work on Windows 11, but I've only tested them on Windows 10, but they should work on either operating system. So the first thing that we're gonna do is check to see if System Restore is enabled. And to do that, click on the Start button and just type System Restore. And when you do that, it'll you'll get, essentially get Create a Restore Point. So you open that up, and this is our box right here. So obviously we can't run System Restore because as you can see, it's turned off. And typically, it's turned off by default 
if you did a fresh install of a newer build of Windows, if you had Windows 10 and if you've had Windows 10 installed for a really long time, then it's probably turned on. But if you've done a fresh install of like 21H2 or 22H2, it's probably turned off. So you might want to check. So what you do is go over here where it says configure. And then from there, you want to turn on System Restore, and then you want to give it amount of, an amount of space that it wants to use. Right now, it's set to 4%. And you know the more space you give it, the more System Restore points you can have. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. But if you have a smaller hard drive, you might want to keep it down a little bit because this computer right here is currently running a 240 gig drive. So obviously, I don't want to have 50% because it's going to take half my hard drive. So typically, what I would do is between 5 and 10% should be fine. Maybe even less if you're do, using a smaller hard drive, it might be better to use less than, than more. But either way, you get it set there. Go ahead and hit Apply. Hit OK, and there you go. And if you want to, you can actually create a system restore point once you get this started. However, it will create them periodically after Windows updates and things of that nature. So now that we did that, let's move on to the next step. And that's going to be enabling the automatic registry backups. Now let me show you what these are. So if we open up our Explorer here, we're going to go into C Drive, go into Windows, we're going to scroll down to System32. Then we're going to go into config and here's your registry. At least these are the flat files for the registry. And then if we go into reg backup right here, as you can see, folder's empty because Microsoft disabled this in Windows 10 1803. So what we want to do is re-enable it. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up reg edit. Going to have to say yes to the user account control. And then once it opens, we're going to want to go to local machine. Then from there, we want to go into system and then current control set. And then from there, we want to go into control, then session manager. So we're gonna have to scroll down. These are all in alphabetical order, so they should be pretty easy to find, then session manager. So then we want to go after that, we want to go into configuration manager right here. And then from here, we want to add two D word values. So we're going to come up here, we're going to right click, hit new D word 32 bit, and we want to name this one enable periodic backups. And I'll go ahead and have that on the screen here as well as have it in the description below so you can just cut and paste it. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and open this up and you wanna change the value to one. That will enable periodic backups. And then from this point, you wanna create one more and this is going to be another D word 32 bit value and this one's gonna be backup count. Now this one isn't necessary, but it's a good idea to enable because this one's actually going to come in handy for the final tip that I'm going to show you at the end of this video as well. So what you do is with this one, it's just backup count. It's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Go ahead and set this one to the amount of backups that you want of your registry. So typically I would recommend setting it to two, but if you want, you can set it to six if you want. It's up to you. Just keep in mind that it's going to use hard drive space for every backup of the registry that it makes. So at this point, we need to restart Windows so the changes can take effect. So I'm going to go ahead and restart Windows now, and I'll meet you back in Windows when it's done. Okay, we're back in Windows, so we're going to go ahead and take a look and see if our registry backed up. So we're going to go into the C drive, go into Windows, scroll down to your System32 folder, and then from there, we want to go into config and reg backup. And as you can see, it does have backups of the registry now. Unfortunately, they're only zero kilobytes. So this is another problem that we have is once you enable automatic registry backups, the task which actually backs the registry up is broken somehow. So in order to fix it, we have to run the task manually. We can't expect Windows to run it automatically for us. And I don't see this getting fixed anytime soon because you know Microsoft disabled the feature. They probably don't care about the task anymore either. So let me show you how to make this work real quick. Okay, so this isn't hard to fix. It's actually pretty easy. So if we go ahead, I'm just gonna leave this open right here and we're gonna open up Task Scheduler. So from Task Scheduler, we want to go into our task library, go into Microsoft, go into Windows, and then scroll down until you find Registry. And then from here, you can see right here where it says Reg Idle Backup. This is the task that actually backs the registry up for you. So if we right click on this and hit Run, and then we're going to minimize this, as you can see, our registry backed up fine. Unfortunately, if you 
want the registry to back up, you have to run it manually. It, the, as an automatic task, for some reason it's broken. So obviously you don't wanna do this manually all the time. You want this to happen automatically. And to do that, there's a little workaround that I figured out. Let me show you how to do it. So if you come down here, we're just gonna go into our task scheduler library right here. And once we're in this area right here, we're gonna right click and hit create new task. And then from here, we're just gonna put up auto reg backup. Make it really easy so we understand it. Actually, you know what, maybe I should spell auto right. Auto reg backup, there, that's even better. All right, so from this one, I would recommend running it at the highest privilege. And then I would come over here, change this configure for to Windows 10, and then we go into triggers. And then for triggers, this can be whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna make mine be daily because why not? but you can make yours weekly, monthly, or whatever interval that you'd like to do in order to keep your registry backed up. Totally up to you. I'm gonna do daily for my example, but there's no benefit or downside to do any of the other ones other than if you do weekly or monthly and it's been two or three weeks since you've done a backup and you need it, then it's gonna be an outdated registry backup. But either way, you pick the one that fits you the best. And once you do that, go ahead and hit okay. And then at this point, we wanna hit actions. Now for actions, we wanna create a new action and what we're gonna be doing is running this registry task manually. And to do that, we need to run a DOS command. So we're gonna hit new and I'm just gonna paste it in here because I'm kinda of lazy, but this is the command right here. It's scheduled tasks, forward slash run, forward slash I, forward slash TN, and then the path to the reg idle backup task. And I'll go ahead and put this on the screen right here so you can see it, as well as have it in the description below so you can just copy and paste it if you want. Now when you hit okay, it's gonna give you an error. And it's gonna tell you that it appears there's arguments in this task. Well, duh, of course there are. Go ahead and just hit yes to the error. And if you want to, you can double check it again. And all it does is it moves all of the arguments into the optional argument thing right here. That's okay, it works perfectly fine that way. So once you do that, go into conditions and you can set these conditions whatever you want. If you want to, you can uncheck the start task only if the computer is on AC power. All this stuff is completely up to you. There's no requirement to change any of these settings right here. In the last tab, what I would recommend is right here where it says run task as soon as possible after a scheduled start is missed. I would go ahead and check that one right there. And other than that, that's about it. I would go ahead and hit okay. And at this point, now you have a registry backup in your scheduled tasks, which all it's really doing is running another scheduled task. But if you run it, it'll go ahead and run the task and it'll give you another backup of your registry. All right, at this point, you're pretty much done. Now your registry is gonna back up all the time automatically and you'll also have automatic system restore points. Why Microsoft disabled these, I have no idea. But it's nice to be able to know that you can turn them back on. But now, I told you that I had a bonus tip I was gonna give you and this one you're really gonna like. Back in Windows 7, we were able to hit the F8 key when we were booting up in order to get into safe mode. Unfortunately, that's been gone for a long time, but what would you say if I told you you could turn it back on again? And it's really easy. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so we're done with this. We can go ahead and close it. And what we're gonna have to do at this point is we're gonna have to go back to our registry. So we're gonna click Start, type Reg Edit here. And then once it opens up, we need to be in the exact same place that we were just at. And then for this, what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and right click on Configuration Manager, set New Key, and we're gonna be creating a key here. And this key is gonna be called and this key is gonna be called last known good. Just go ahead and type that in, just like I have it on the screen. Make sure you use the capitalization the same way I have and make it one word. You can copy this from the description below if you want to. And then go ahead and hit enter. And then right here you wanna collect, you wanna set new D string 32 bit value. And all you wanna do is type enabled. And then from there you wanna change this setting from zero to one. And this will enable the last known good configuration from the old Windows 8 menu. And then this isn't the only thing you have to set. There's one more command that we have to run. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and close our registry. We're gonna click on the start button and we're gonna type in CMD. And then from here, we wanna make sure to run the command prompt as an administrator. And from this point, once it's open, we wanna run this command right here. It's BCD edit forward slash set. We wanna have current in the brackets and then boot menu policy, 
legacy. And I'll go ahead and have this on the screen right here. Make sure you copy it exactly how I have it. And I'll also have it down in the description below for you to copy if you want. And then once you hit enter, it'll go ahead and say operation completed successfully. Now keep in mind, editing your BCD, this is the file that tells your computer how to boot, is kind of dangerous. So make sure you do that with caution right there. And if you need to, you can always restore it by instead of putting legacy, just put regular in place of legacy. And I'll go ahead and have that down in the description below as well. But let's restart the computer and see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close this now because we don't need it anymore. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit start and then shut down in order to restart the computer. Okay, as soon as the post screen shows, go ahead and hit F8 and there we go. There's our advanced boot options and we can go down and hit safe mode just like that and boot the system into safe mode in Windows 10. Personally, I think that's kind of a cool feature. I don't know why Microsoft ever got rid of it, but I'm glad there's a way to turn it back on now. So as you can see, it's not too hard to re-enable these features in Windows. And even though you will rarely need any of these features and hopefully you'll never need them, it's nice to have them if something goes wrong. Because you know, I have no doubt that I would have been able to fix that system last week that I had in my shop if these features would have been enabled. Unfortunately, Microsoft disabled automatic registry backup because you, they could save a couple hundred megabytes of hard drive space. Um, personally, I don't think it's worth it. You know, they could just disable telemetry. I'm sure that would save more space. But also, these features were disabled without telling anyone about it. At least I didn't know at least until I needed it and it wasn't available. Unfortunately, I can't enable these features on computers that I haven't worked on before and typically people don't call me until they have problems. So unfortunately, it, I won't be able to rely on these methods anymore to fix Windows systems in the future. But you know, it's very rare that you have to reload Windows on a computer in 2023. I remember back in the Windows XP days, you had to reload Windows all the time. However, Windows has become much more stable than it has been in the past, and typically you can save the OS, at least in most cases. However, if Microsoft continues to take away features that help us fix running installs of Windows, then we're going to be stuck with reloading Windows a lot more often than we should have to. But it is what it is. At least if we have to reload Windows more often moving forward, it means that we'll have to have a Windows installer on hand all the time. But if you have systems running multiple versions of Windows, then check out this video here where I show you how to set up a USB thumb drive that can boot multiple bootable ISOs all on just one thumb drive. As always, you guys have a great day.